Hey guys, Spudknocker here, as always, and I figured today we'd hop in the cockpit of the F-18C Hornet and take a look at the latest open beta update that was released this morning. Now this is a very huge update that came with a ton of fixes, improvements, and additions to DCS World that I think pilots from across the spectrum of World War II guys up to the modern age kind of guys are really going to love. And a lot of the additions to the aircraft within DCS World in this update are simply just additions that enhance what you already know and the procedures you already know and what you already do in your favorite jet. So for example, the data link contacts on the HMD of the F-18C, we don't have to learn anything new or any new procedures. We just turn on the HMD and there they are. There's B, C, and D out there, uh, the dash two, three, and four in our flight out there in kind of a combat spread off to our right hand side. And of course, this also displays data link contacts from aircraft uh, that are out in front of you that you are seeing with your own radar, um, that are data link contacts from your wingman, from the AWACS, from other flights that are in the area. And the only limitation is it can only display seven of those contacts at once. So let's go ahead and bring our jet over to the right hand side. So that way we can kind of take a look at those MiG-21s that we have orbiting out here and see if we can get some of them to pop up on our HMD. And we can definitely see some unknowns out there. And we can see that we're seeing the range to those targets. It doesn't display altitude, but we don't really need altitude because we can just see where they are out in front of us. And unknown up at the top because they haven't been NCTR'd, so we don't know the actual type of aircraft. But if we had lollipops for RWR contacts, say if they were flying towards us out here, we could see that they were MiG-21s. Now these MiG-21s are just kind of set to kind of just lazily orbit and not really be all too much of a threat for us as we kind of fly through this and demonstrate what I have found to be some of the kind of uh, downsides of using this and kind of the limitations of it and why DCS World pilots aren't going to want to be too dependent on using your HMD to look for contacts out in front of you. We can see already that as we fly very nice and straight and level, the data links and the contacts that we see around us look pretty stable. But as we start to maneuver the jet and start to maneuver, maneuver the jet very hard, like say in a dogfight or in a, in a uh, BVR engagement that's getting closer and closer and closer, um, the data link update rate, which we can already see is kind of chugging along out here on these MiG-21s, gets feels like it gets slower and slower and slower. And so the data link uh, contact that you see on your HMD out here might be actually quite a bit off from where you are expecting it to be. And we'll see that as we start to fly in towards these MiG-21s out here. And we could also see there that as we were flying, let's see, you can see that now, see they're trying to update their positions. So it's also, it's not just the high latency of the Link 16 data link itself, but also the fact that our helmet is having to compensate for its pro own processing of where our head is looking, where our aircraft is positioned in kind of space and time around us. So as you roll the jet, you can see that it can be a lot harder to actually keep track of where those contacts are. And they come away from where we can actually see those jets out there because we can get a visual on these MiG-21s now. Now it does a really, really good job when you're far away and you're kind of nice flying nice and straight and level. Well, like I said, once you get into a dogfight, it makes it a lot more difficult. We can also see the update and refresh rate of the box of the target that we have locked up with our radar is a lot higher than the actual data link contact. So let's go ahead and bring our radar back in. And we'll lock one of these guys up again so we can kind of get that visual. So we'll come off to the left a little bit. And we can see the difference between the refresh rate of the data link and the locked on contact. Also keep in mind here that the refresh rate of the data link increased, and we can see it's increased quite a bit here because of the fact that we're actually scanning these guys with our radar. And so let's go ahead and pop up another contact here. We can see these guys out here. And let's bring them off to the right hand side of our HUD again. And the helmet is trying to refresh to bring one of those symbols 
to the second guy over to our left, it can take a few seconds because like we've seen in Wags' video, it can only display seven contacts on the helmet itself at once. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, and the seventh are t a couple MIGs that I think are kind of further out in, uh, north here in the Bacaw Valley. So this kind of also shows another one of those um, weaknesses of the system and why you don't want to rely on it absolutely 100% is the fact that we've got two MiG-21s right here that I've got my head on right now that are going through and they're not being displayed on our helmet, but we've got two MiGs that are further out, out here that are definitely being displayed. You'll also notice that as you get more radars eyes onto a target, like say your wingman, your own radar, etc., you're going to get more and more um, higher refresh rates on those contacts that you see. Let's see if we can come back around and mix it up with a couple of these MIGs, see if we can get them to maneuver a little bit. And you can really see kind of the You can see that we saw D number there, number four in the flight. Took a little bit for the system to catch up and actually put the circle over the top of it with the D. And we can see we've got a couple MIGs out here. We'll go ahead and lock one of them back up. Keep in mind we're just doing soft twiz locks on these guys. And we'll go ahead, bring this radar back in. So as you're flying in a dogfight and you have your head turned around back behind you and you're trying to see who's on your tail, like say you didn't get a good visual ID on who you merged with, it can be very helpful in the fact that you can look back and make sure it's not one of your wingmen. So you're not going to accidentally shoot down or think you're merged with a uh, enemy aircraft, like say you didn't have time to visually ID that's a MiG-21 instead of an F-18. And it looks like these guys are trying to maneuver a little bit here. And we can see that very easily. Yep, these guys behind us are in fact our wingmen. And you can see that as we get closer and closer, like I've stated before, we can see that these guys are not, it's not 100% effective as to keeping an eye on identifying every target around you. But, the additional situational awareness that it does give. So here's a good example of it right here. So we're merged with the MiG-21 and we're trying to keep track of him. He is, I think I lost visual contact with him, but I know he's down here below the mountain somewhere. And what if I had lost contact with him a little bit earlier and, and thought that maybe he was one of these guys up here. We can see one, two, three contacts here with a fourth up here. Well, we can eliminate that he's definitely not one of these two guys because we've got uh, C and D. So that's uh, three and four right there. I believe that's number two, but we can actually check that very, very quickly with this new addition. Yep, that's two. And so we can very easily identify that that MiG-21 is right there, not up above that where the area of that mountain was. So it's a good addition to your situational awareness, but we just can't rely on it too heavily. But this, what I was trying to say earlier was this addition of, this increases your situational awareness. And that coupled with the addition of the RWR contacts showing up as popsicle sticks on your HMD like they do on your HUD will also increase your ability to keep track of different bandits around you and keep track of who is who. And we can see that this guy actually did pop up as a data link contact as an unknown. And we can see yep, he's a MiG-21. As we get more mixed up, so here's a whole bunch of aircraft around out here. We can see that as we try to pause it a little bit here on target, so that way we can actually track who it is, we can see that we've got B right here so that is a, a friendly aircraft that we don't want to engage in. And we can see, oh, I just got hit by some flak. So we'll go ahead and keep. I don't think I got hit. They're just exploding very nearby, which is a little bit scary. And we can see that B, number two out there, is right there. And then there's a 
jet that just went right by us, right over the top of us, merging with us again. That's a MiG-21. We can obviously very easily see there that it's a MiG-21. But say you're flying against maybe a MiG-29 or a Su-27 where they're a little bit harder to identify visually because the twin tails and the kind of similar layout to an F-18 and F-14 and F-15, these kinds of things that can be very, very helpful um, in, in determining, yep, we've got number two behind us and we've got a MiG-21 who just merged with us. And for those of you guys who are thinking, what the heck, where'd that flak come from? Eagle Dynamics has also opened up the some of the units in the World War II asset pack to belong to any DCS World base game player. So that includes modern jets, which is very, very important um, because flak, even though it is an old technology, is still very potent against modern jets. And we can see that's, I think that was number four. We can zoom in to visual identify them. Yep, that's a, that is in fact an F-18. And I was coming in on him trying to get potentially on a six for a gun's shot. And we saw the data link helped save his life because we saw that it was D. And so we knew exactly who he is or where he was. And we can see we've got two contacts out there. Now let's look at that. Look at the limitations there. So we've got two MiG-21s way the heck out there. And we saw them on our uh, data link on our HMD very quickly there. But we could see that they were like nine nautical miles away. And so we can very easily just disregard those and stay within the little fight here with the dogfight. And we can see that it looks like one of our aircraft over here is launching a missile. Looks like maybe a Sidewinder via the smoke plume there. And I think it's going after this guy here. So we can unpause it verify that he is part of our flight. I think he's maybe number three and um, see him actually shoot at this guy over here. Oh, looks like we did. It's four. So it's probably D again with a Fox too. So it is probably a Sidewinder again. And we can see the Bofors guns are just shooting everywhere, popping. Yeah, so that was number, that was D. So that was four. But you can see again, even when looking for our own guys, it's not exactly the fastest system in the world. So while it helps, it's not infallible, that's for sure. That's kind of the, been the theme of this entire demonstration here. And we see, yep, they're nine nautical miles out, so don't ha really have to worry about them. And we see somebody's locking me up somewhere. We got a MiG-21 coming around on us. Oh, look, the Bofors guns are definitely shooting at us. We got some flak going on. Now it's not perfect in the way in the in the way that uh, these flak guns don't really like to engage very quickly. I think it might be the fact that maybe they have a hard time actually tracking uh, faster fighter jets than they do the World War II speed aircraft. So we got that MiG on our six there. We can definitely visually ID him, so I don't even need to worry about look, trying to get him within the field of view of my helmet-mounted display. I don't know if you guys are also noticing this, but there were quite a few terrain engine improvements that seem to have really upped the performance of the Syria map. You can see, yep. Oh wow, he's even got a data link contact on him, so we can see that, yep, he's definitely not part of our flight. And he was shown as unknown, so a paperclip instead of a chevron. And we're going to hear some of those new AOA tones that are also added to the F-18. Another one of those things that a great addition to the F-18 that we don't have to um, learn anything new, don't have to change our procedures at all. I'm not, this isn't really a dogfighting tutorial video. I'm just kind of flying around, just trying to get some good visuals here for you guys. Popping a bunch of rudder. If I were flying a real dogfight, I'd definitely get rid of these Mavericks that are hanging off of my jet right here. So let's go ahead. And Firefox 2 on that guy and get rid of him. And we'll use full deflection of the stick and full rudder deflection to get ourselves turned back over right side up. 
And we can see that MiG falling down to the sky, or to the uh, ground here. <laughs> and so we can use the popsicle sticks of F-18s on our HUD right here to then help us get aligned with where our good guys are. And we can see that even though it's kind of having a hard time refreshing and the C is off from that actual aircraft there a little bit, we have a good idea that that is number three right there. And now we can see that it's refreshing a little bit faster, but as we roll the airplane, that refresh rate goes way down. And there's D right there, so that's number four, trying to join back up with number three after the craziness of that little uh, dogfight that was definitely one-sided because we had those MiGs set as clean. They didn't have any weapons and they weren't set to a very good skill level just for this demonstration. And uh, yeah, so I hope this was kind of a cool little fly through just to kind of look at what's possible with the new data link uh, system on the HUD here. It was pretty fun to make and we can see we still got some more orbiting um, MiG-21s out here, 4.5 nautical miles up. They're, of course, you can see visually they're way the heck up above us. And we can see they are identified as enemies. And we can see that data link lag there. So the further you are, are out from those contacts, the more helpful this stuff is going to be than um, if it is very, very close like we are here with these guys. So hopefully, I know that my computer is kind of beastly compared to a lot of people who fly in DCS world, which is totally okay, of course. But the fact that I get better performance means that you guys are going to get better performance with this update on this very, very big and very highly detailed map of Syria. I still think the trees need to render a little bit further out um, on the Syria map here to get full awesome detail. But uh, it still looks really, really nice. And this is a probably my favorite time of day here on Syria, around 1830 to um, 1900 on the Syria map is kind of like the perfect time of day. And uh, yeah, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope you guys give it a like and maybe subscribe to my channel. And uh, all your support, guys, is super, super appreciated. Um, couldn't do it without you guys, especially my patrons who uh, help keep things going, like when computers uh, fry and burn out and all that good stuff. <laughs> well, not good stuff, but you know, guys know what I mean. Um, and uh, yeah, so stay he healthy out there, guys. And of course, fly safe. Have a good one. There's those unknown MiG-21s again. <laughs>